comfortable using it before you attempt to use it with a patient. Most, most lifts also, uh, facilities require two of you to be working with the patient when you're using a lift. Keep in mind that there are things you always need to think about when you're working with patients. There are considerations for the patient and for safety and for the patient's involvement. And um, hopefully when you're out working, these things will pop into your mind and you'll remember that these are important. If you start doing these as a habit, it will just become a natural way of working and your job will be more enjoyable to you and uh, more enjoyable for the patients you're working with. Hi, my name is Terry Walters. I'm an educator at a long-term care and subacute facility. You've just seen the Hoyer lift, the lift that lifts the patient's body completely. Now I'm going to be showing you the standing lift, a lift that can be used to lift a patient from one seated area to another seated area. For example, this lift can be used to lift a patient from the side of the bed to the wheelchair or from the wheelchair to the toilet. Remember that this lift is not meant to be a conveyance, however, so you wouldn't use this lift to move a patient down a hallway. Our facility purchased this lift really with one patient in mind. He was 99 years old, and the thing that he wanted to do the most in life was use the toilet. The Hoyer lift was not possible to use to put him on the toilet. It was difficult for our staff to lift him, and he was really too weak to walk. This lift has helped him um, gain some independence because we can very easily and quickly move him from his wheelchair to the toilet, and he really loves this lift, so do we. In order to use this lift, the patient should be able to bear at least partial weight. In other words, patients should be able to stand on their legs at least a little bit. Patients should also be aware that they're being lifted. The standing lift consists of a number of components. First of all, there's the base that the patient's feet are placed onto. Next is a padded surface that the patient's knees will go up against. And that padded surface is adjustable so that you can bring it out or in depending on the length of the patient's legs. Next are the lifting arms. These are the arms that will actually be lifting the patient with a sling attached. And next are the controls. There's really two controls on this machine. One is um, a control that's built in that's an up button and a down button to raise and lower the arms. The other is a remote device so that you could actually move away from the machine a little bit, a little closer to the patient, and you can use these buttons to raise and lower the patient. So that's the remote. This particular lift um, has a battery that is an integral part of the lift. When the battery runs down, it is simply pulled out and replaced with another battery that's been waiting in the charger. And those two batteries can simply be rotated as needed. Next, I'm going to show you how the base widens. By simply pressing down on the pedal, we'll widen the base. The reason that it's a good idea to have the base at its widest angle is so that we have a broad base of support when using the lift to lift a patient. It adds to the stability of the lift. Next, I'm going to show you the sling that's used and that's attached to the lift to help lift the patient into the standing position. The sling should be checked before each use to be sure that it's intact and in good condition so that it's safe for us to use on the patient. The sling wraps around the patient in this manner. There is a safety strap that can be secured. When you secure the safety strap, you don't have to um, make it too tight, but you should just make it secure so that it's not going to slip too much. At the ends of the slings are some color-coded loops, and the purpose of the loops is to allow you to bring the patient close to the lift or keep the patient further away from the lift, depending on the patient's size as you're using it. The sling should be washed when it becomes visibly soiled. 
Mechanical lifts have weight limits. This particular lift has a weight limit of 350 pounds. Always check with the nurse to find out the weight capacity of the lift that you're going to be using. Now I'll cover some safety considerations to keep in mind when using the lift. Two persons should be used to lift a patient with a lifting device. Check with the nurse to learn the weight capacity of a lift that you will use. The base should be open to its widest angle to give the machine a wide base of support. Lock the base while preparing to lift the patient. The sling should be checked before each use to make sure it is intact. It's important for patients to keep their arms on the outside of the sling while they are being lifted. During the lift, instruct the patient to sit back instead of leaning forward. While lifting, check the sling loops to make sure they are connected correctly to the lift. Our patient, Mrs. Johnson, and I are now going to demonstrate the standing lift for you. Mrs. Johnson, this lift is going to lift you up from the edge of the bed over to the wheelchair. It's going to be comfortable and safe and I'm going to explain exactly what you need to do. First of all, I'm going to be moving the lift closer to you and I'd like you to put your feet on this platform. I'd like your knees to be comfortably up against this padded area. Okay. And I'm going to lock the, the base. And then we're going to place this sling around you. The sling has a safety strap. When you're securing the strap, you don't want it to be too tight, just comfortable. Now I'm going to place the ends of the sling into the loop holders. What I want to do is put them, put them through the loops that will allow me to have Mrs. Johnson as close or as far away from the sling, from the um, uh, lift that she needs to be. I'm going to choose the yellow and purple loops to put this through. Yeah, I'm just going to Okay. Now I'm going to have you put your arms on the outside of the sling and hold on to the lifting arms. I'm going to move around to the controls as our second person joins us to guide Mrs. Johnson into the wheelchair. We're going to unlock the base. And meanwhile, our second person has locked the wheelchair so that we're sure that the wheelchair isn't going to slide while we're doing the lift. Okay. Mrs. Johnson, I'd like you to lean back slightly while we do the lift. That's perfect. And that's going to keep you um, right in the spot where you should be in the sling. She's cleared the surface, so now I'm going to move her over to the wheelchair. Okay, the second person makes sure that Mrs. Johnson is far enough back in the wheelchair, and when everything is set, I lower the arms. Once the patient is in the wheelchair, the sling can be removed. You've just seen a demonstration of the standing lift. Thank you for watching and good luck to you in your training.